So amongst all the stuff that's come out in the last while uh, that's Gen AI, there have been some 3D model generators that have come out. I've tried a couple of them and none of them kind of fit my workflow. I just, I found them a little confusing, their interfaces. Until yesterday, uh, I tried one called 3D AI Studio and I wanted to just give a quick look at it because I think it's pretty good and it's pretty simple to use and uh, it might help you out making some props or even some characters in some cases. So first off, uh, I'm here in Mid Journey and I've got a couple of like a simple sword on a white background. Now it's really important that you have a, a blank color background, like a simple colored background. Uh, it, it starts to struggle when there's too many details to, to distinguish between the background and the object that you're trying to create. So I really suggest that you make something on a white background or a dark background if, if it's something that's light. So let's grab this guy, which is pretty simple, although there is a pretty heavy shadow there. Maybe let's, let's look at this cartoon one actually. Uh, so I'm just going to grab that. Now, part of this is that the uh, the software here, 3D AI Studio, it wants smaller images. It wants images under 1500 by 1500 pixels. So let's just get started. It's magic. Uh, and what I like about it is immediately we've got the 3D interface here, just like you would use in any uh, 3D package. So I'm just going to grab my image, and we'll bring this here. And hit the 3D generate. So it's going to take about 30 credits and about 20 seconds. Now that's really going to be a rough draft, it's going to not look 100% and the textures are not going to be great, but it's a starting point, it's just getting the basic geometry, and then we'll go through a couple of other steps to refine it. So there we are. It's uh, pretty simple, but it's got the right basic shape, and the texture is generally right. So what I generally do now is go over to the refine, which will make the mesh a little more positive. In my experience, it doesn't quite take the 10 minutes. Now, once we hit the refine, it comes back to, to the home page for my screen where it's got all the generations that I've done. Now, this isn't only 3D models. Uh, some of these like this are a 3D model. And then these ones here are images that were generated using their texture AI. You're basically able to put your, your generated uh, model on screen, generate a texture on top of that, and sort of paint in the details where you want them to be. And you can keep generating images over and over until you get something that you like, uh, or mix and match between the different uh, images that you've used. There's also this uh, image AI generator here. So if you don't have Midjourney, you could just prompt something straight in here, take it over to the image to 3D, and uh, start working that way. So you may have to refresh your browser to see the results. Uh, so I'm just going to hit the view item here. And here's the refined version. It's not that much different, I don't think, in terms of poly count and all that, but. Uh, looks a little bit more refined at least in the textures so we're gonna do one more thing and that's remesh now remeshing lets us pick a format i'm going to keep it in glb just because that's what their texturing accepts and we could pick a uh poly count here i'm gonna go for like 2000 this is a really simple model it doesn't need to be a lot all of these operations are pretty quick, under a couple of minutes. Uh, so if you've got a bunch of props, you could have one generating in the background while you're, while you're going to generate the next one. All of these operations are pretty quick, under a couple of minutes. So uh, when I was working on a couple of different models yesterday, what I would do was generate one, refine it, and while it was remeshing, I would start generating another one. Uh, and then once everything was done, I would go into the texturing process. Okay, so we got our changes detected sign. I'm going to reload again. And here we have our remeshed one. Now, we don't get a 3D view this way. Uh, it has a little bit of info here. And what I'm going to do at this point is just download it. So it's 
been saved to my downloads folder. And next I'm going to go over here to the texture AI. So this is still in alpha, as you can see up here, but in my experience, it's working pretty well so far. So what we're going to do is go over here to import GLB. And I'm just going to go to my downloads folder and pick that GLB. Here's our GLB file. Okay, so here we have a view of it. And you'll see a matching view over here. Now what I'm going to do is let's just pick a straight on angle. And we're going to say uh, down here in the prompt, let's call this sword. This is kind of the default prompt that is in here. And I don't really mess with that much other than to say what the object is. So I'm going to say ancient sword and leave all the rest of that stuff. And there are some settings here, including the creativity, resemblance, all this stuff. I don't really mess with that. I just hit the generate button. Now over in this window, as you see, the little green lines are analyzing the model. And we should see an updated version right here. So that looks great. So at this point, I'm just going to minimize this settings window. And we can just start painting the new textures over top of that. Now we get into a bit of a problem when we rotate this around. We can't paint on this side because we haven't generated a texture for it. So we're going to have to really do this multiple times. So just paint in the new version here and let's take another look at the whole thing. Now, one thing I've found is that if you want a lot of detail on a texture, zoom in really tight. So let's get this underside. I don't know that we would ever see this in a game, but we're going to generate this texture anyway. So look how detailed that is compared to what we started with. Uh, that looks really nice for this area. All of it looks really nice, actually. You know, I'm going to do the same on this side. Generate one more time. See if we get a little more detail around here. And look how crisp that looks. It's really quite nice. Now you do have to watch if I was, say, painting around this area and the image only ends here, you would get a pretty abrupt sharp line. Uh, same with up here, as you can see. I really messed that up by painting it in. So it's kind of nice to be able to see this is what your texture map looks like. And in theory, we would probably want both the front and the back of the handle to be the same texture. And we might be able to do that actually in the texture by copying and pasting one to another. So once that's done, I'm just going to go and export the GLB file. So finding a character design that would work with this is a little bit challenging. You have to look at the images you're generating and look for a combination of not too detailed as well as uh, no places where there might be any intersections. So on this case, it was probably a little too detailed, and so they ended up being holes in the hands. And on the second one, because the source image had the legs fairly close together, the uh, model generated with the feet stuck together. In this case, there's low detail on the fingers, and the legs are fairly split apart, so I think it'll work. So here we go. If we take a look around, 
she looks pretty good. Obviously, the texture is a little wonky. Um, but otherwise, she looks quite good. And this is something I think we could actually maybe use. So I'm going to refine this. We are going to fast forward now. Let's speed this up so you aren't too bored. So if we have a quick look in Blender, this is what she looks like. And I'm going to take this GLB file from here, export it as a Wavefront OBJ, and in AccuRig. Fast forward now. Let's speed this up so you aren't too bored. So after taking her through AccuRig and bringing her into Character Creator 4, I was able to put her texture back on her. And here we go. We can just throw some mocap data. Now, obviously, this isn't going to work for a main character uh, or somebody you need close up. But I can see it kind of working for a background character at the moment. Uh, say you have a big scene, you want to have a bunch of people in the background. Then you can generate characters in that style in Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion. Bring those images into something like 3D AI Studio and export yourself characters that have the right look or the right proportion like this girl with her giant head. And that to me seems pretty handy for making some background characters or crowds that have a very specific look. Uh, or if you want characters of a specific style, they don't need to do much other than move in the background, maybe a little bit out of focus. This is great for that. So thanks for watching and uh, girl with the giant head, why don't you dance us out of here?